And as part of our special coverage of Colombia's presidential elections, we now invite Arlene Thinkner, who is a professor at Rosario's University. Be welcome, Arlene. Thank you. So after a calm and expedited voting day in Colombia, the turnout of these elections shows more than what expected. Gustavo Petro is leading the pack with over 40% of the votes, far ahead from his main contender who amassed around 28% of the ballots. What is this gap in the final count telling us? Well, Petro um, did not perform as well as the polls had indicated. Um, and at the same time, the, I think the, the largest surprise of these elections is the, the voting of, in favor of Rodolfo Hernandez, um, who is going to pass to the second round with, with uh, Petro and who be debunked the official candidate Federico Gutierrez um, around whose candidacy both Centro Democrático, the party of acting president Ivan Duque, as well as much of the political establishment in Colombia um, had supported. And so the question now is whether or not Petro will be able to compete against Hernández, who has campaigned on an anti-establishment, anti-corruption platform. So uh, Petro gained the rural vote in Nariño, in Cauca and Cundinamarca, which is no surprise given the local base that Francia Marquez holds there. And also Bogota voters went for him to the polls, but they were one million voters short to win. Did abstentionism came to play in this turnout and how will Petro add the undecisive voter to this base? Um, abstention levels are, are historically high in Colombia as compared to other countries in Latin America, if not the world. Um, and this election was no exception. Um, participation rates were slightly higher than in the previous presidential elections in 2018. But normally between the first round and the second round of elections, there is only slight changes in the number of voters who participate and sometimes voting actually decreases. So I think more than asking um, to what degree Petro can get voters to participate in the next round, um, the question is rather to what extent he can gain votes um, that were deposited in favor of Federico Gutierrez or even Rodolfo Hernandez. Um, we expect him to receive the votes, for instance, that centrist candidate um, Sergio Fajardo received, and yet these are way below the one million votes that Petro will, will allegedly need to win in the second round. So I think it's more a question of how he gains votes from the other candidates that participated, but also how he changes his discourse in a way that can position him successfully towards a candidate who surprised everyone and was not expected to pass to the second round. Um, out of the eight running formulas, there was only three women amongst the vice presidential candidates, and two of them now will face each other in the second round with their presidential challenger aside. Considering this, are they the ones to watch and the ones who could spearhead or leverage final voting? Um, until now, uh, Hernandez's vice, vice presidential candidate, who is also an Afro-descendant female, has not been a very vocal participant. Nope. Whereas in Petro's campaign, Francia Marquez, who was a presidential candidate herself and won a very high number of votes, has been a very visible and active presence um, in his campaign. And I would say she's actually... Um, fed the voting that he received. Um, I think it remains to be seen in the second round to what degree Hernandez gives more voice to his vice presidential candidate. But based upon what we know about <clears throat> Hernandez, I would say that his misogynist and sexist tendencies um, make me think that she will not be a visible candidate. Yeah, because, you know, I think that's the difference between an active vice presidential candidate and just an adorn as a vice presidential candidate. Do you, don't you think that? This is true. Um, in most presidential systems, um, vice presidents do not play necessarily an active role and a visible role. And I think one difference that characterizes 
um, the, the Petro Francia Marquez campaign is actually the degree to which Francia has been a key factor in securing the vote that Petro received. Um, she has been offered, indeed, in addition to being vice, vice president, a new ministry of equality. Um, this is quite atypical, I would say, both in Colombia and in general um, in presidentialist systems. So I would, I would suspect that if Petro were to be elected, Francia Marquez is going to be a very active president, uh, vice president in his government. Yeah, you're right. So thank you, Arlene, for your time and your opinions here in From the South. Thank you.